Hello and welcome back. I am excited. This is your last video of the week, so we're on our way out here. We are going to talk a little bit more about proving logical equivalence with truth tables. I decided with the first week getting started and stuff, we'll wait and add that more into next week, um, proving logical equivalence without truth tables. So let's just focus on getting these logical connectives straight in our minds and understanding how to build a truth table and thinking a little bit more deeply about all the connections and cool stuff in logic. So we want to show that an implication is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. So in order to show that this is logically equivalent, we're going to use a truth table, but we also need to know what the contrapositive is. So if we've got um, an, in, an implication, P implies Q, then the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. And so, at first glance, this seems kind of odd that it would be logically equivalent. But if you think back to the party example, the party that we went to, remember that question on D2L where you had to choose two of them? Hopefully you identified the correct two choices and you can see now how they're related. I think, if I'm correct, the two statements that you chose were if your guest is drinking an alcoholic beverage, then they must be of legal age. And then you select one more implication, and it was if your guest is not of legal age, then they are not drinking an alcoholic beverage. So what we're saying, what I'm saying here, is those are logically equivalent statements. They're, I can replace one of the other and they're the same thing. So what we're going to do <coughs> is develop the truth table, really just of this contrapositive, because we already know the truth table of this, and show that no matter what I plug in for the truth value of P or Q, I know that I'm going to get the same truth value. So in order to do this, I've got to get my setup going on here. If I'm, I'm trying to write a truth table for P implies Q, but also in my truth table I want not Q implies not P to be in there. Okay? I'm going to put this all in one truth table when I'm thinking about logical equivalence just to make sure that my atomic propositions are going in the same order so that um, my truth values aren't swapped around or weird or anything. So I'm going to start out, I know I've got two atomic propositions, so that means I've got four possible truth value combinations. So I could have true, true, I could have true, false, I could have false, true, I could have false, false. All right, and then um, let me go ahead and take care of this guy. We know this one, we're pretty familiar with P implies Q. So P implies Q, I'm going to focus in on the column for P on Q. True implies true, I know is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. All right, now I want to build up to this compound proposition. And remember that negation comes before implication in the order of precedence, so I want to go ahead and evaluate the truth values of negation of Q and negation of P. And notice how I put those in order the same order that I see my final truth, uh, my final compound proposition. And the reason I'm doing that is because I know that with that implication, the order matters. So if I were to write a column for not P, then write a column for not Q, I might misread the order. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're, when you're building up to the final column. Try to put those implication those pieces of your application in order uh, from hypothesis conclusion, okay? So if I negate Q, I'm just going to swap my truth value. So I'm going to look back at Q and just instead of true, I'll write false. Instead of false, I'll write true. And again, same thing. Okay. If, to evaluate negation of P, I'm going to look at my P column and just swap out the truth values. So instead of true, I'm going to write false. 
Instead of false, I'm going to write true. All right, now we've got our hypothesis and we've got our conclusion. Now we can put these together with our implication. And again, the reason that we broke these up before going into the implication was because negation comes before implication when we're thinking about order of precedence with our logical operators. Now, I'm going to think, focus in on these two columns only, because those are the only ones I need to build this guy. False implies false is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. True implies true is true. So notice, the truth values that I use to get there might not look exactly the same, but the key element, or the key thing here, is that I get the same truth values for every single truth value combination of my inputs, my atomic propositions here. So if P is true, Q is true, both of these are true. Okay? If P is true, Q is false, both of these are false. If uh, P is false, Q is true, both these are true. If P is false, Q is false, both these are true. So because of those truth values, because they're all the same, I know that this allows me to conclude, this is proof that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. And so, <clears throat> if you imagine, we could get really complex here with a bunch of different connectives and a bunch of different atomic propositions, and it'll get complicated fast. I mean, think about what 2 to the 4th power is. Um, 16, right? I mean, 16 rows is a lot to manage. So if we had four uh, propositions, atomic propositions, that'd be kind of gross. So what we're going to develop next week is proving logical equivalences without truth tables. All the background information and, and work is within truth tables, but, but basically what we're going to do is take smaller logical equivalences, like this one that we just proved, and use them to show bigger logical equivalents, relatively. Um, but for now, focus on these truth tables <coughs> in your homework. Um, you're going to be showing that the converse and the inverse of an implication are not equivalent to an implication. And just so that you're familiar with that notation or those terms, um, <coughs> excuse me, the converse, the converse, so if I've got my implication here, the implication I'm starting with is P implies Q. So if P then Q. The converse of this is just the order switched. Okay. And then the inverse, the inverse of this is not P implies not Q. So we're going to talk about, because I think you might, you might wonder, what's the negation of P implies Q? And sometimes people want to jump to this or this. Um, sometimes they're just not sure, right? So what we're going to do is look at the negation of the implication, look at these, and see if we can figure out what is equivalent, what's not equivalent. Um, you know, are these the same thing? Okay, and I, I think you already know from a video, you should know this, um, but so that's what, that's a piece of your homework. So remember if you're trying to show something or trying to show two compound propositions are not equivalent, then you build truth tables and you just have to find just one truth value that differs. If you find just one truth value that differs, then you know that they're not logically equivalent. Okay, so I look forward to talking to you soon. I think this week we'll just have homework. It'll be kind of homework quiz kind of thing. It's all grouped in the same kind of weekly grade for your homework and quiz. So just getting started, we'll, we'll just do a homework assignment and it uh, will be due next Wednesday evening. So feel free to email me with questions. There's lots of resources posted on D2L, lots of resources on the internet. Um, be resourceful and let me know when you need help. I will talk to you soon.